So, um, our this is our team that, um, my name is Alyssa, I should start with that, yes. We should have named our team, I'm honestly surprised that we didn't. Yeah, work on that. You should that. name it Becca. We, um, we, went to, we went to Warren, Michigan, which for those of you who don't know and think Detroit is all of this part of, of Michigan, um, it's near, or it's in Detroit, Michigan, one of the, um, one of the suburbs, thank you. Um, and we were working um, on rebuilding basements for um, houses that had, um, had, were damaged, sorry, were damaged in the flood they happened there in 2014. So um, I'm gonna let the, the ladies tell you stories about that. This is Casey and Lauren, and um, we had some really good times last week. Okay, so as she said, I'm Casey. She stole a lot of my thunder, but I'll just repeat some stuff. Um, so we were mostly doing remodeling. Um, there is, the, the organization we went through is World Renew. Um, I'm repping them with both aspects here. <laughs> the hat, there was one of them I fought, I won. <laughs> she didn't have to fight hard. So the local on the ground organization that we worked with um, is called Southern Baptist Relief. Southern Baptist Disaster Relief. They are the nicest people you will ever meet. Um, they're all from like Alabama, Georgia, all, all up in the good part of um, the USA. So they were there all week. Um, we worked under them. They placed us in different groups throughout the area. Our specific group paired with um, five boys from Virginia. Uh, College in Virginia, there was a group from Arizona, a group from Alabama, couple groups from Ohio, they were from all over the United States. Um, so we worked with Anna, she was a little Italian lady, we redid her basement all week and it was awesome and it was just some good times. Um, if I'm missing any big things before I hand it over? I don't think so, but that was our, that was our whole deal there. But on the downside, or on the downside, on the downtime that we had, we spent a lot of group time together, a lot of group time <laughs> together. <laughs> there's three of us. Yeah, small group. So. I think that's what Lauren's gonna touch on today. So overall, just some good God moments, um, good God time, good God remodeling, so. Ooh, that was deep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's no way I was gonna be able to actually think about this on the spot, so I have a nice handy dandy paper. Okay, I had the privilege of going to Detroit to fix basements that were ruined by the flood in 2014. I feel as though my experience has was hugely different from the normal mission trip experience, but maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> but it was greatly different from what my expectations were. I went to Detroit expecting to learn to appreciate what I had. <laughs> Looking back, I almost expected to get a pat on the back for being in a better position than the people we were helping. Maybe that would have helped happen, but I made one fatal mistake. Going into the trip, I asked God many, many times to use this trip to change me. <laughs> Bad idea. <laughs> uh, every day in the morning, we had this really awesome devotion that the group actually gave us to do. Then in the evenings, we would discuss the devotion and how it impacted us throughout the day. I, this was my favorite part of the day and was the most memorable and eye-opening part of the trip for me. Um, if it's okay, oh shoot, I don't, I need a Bible. Somebody, <laughs> Bible, Psalms 19, one through six. <laughs> I got you, Becca's got it. Becca, wanna read it really, really loud? I'm not, okay, Psalms six? Psalms 19, one through oh. six. The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech, night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech, they use no words, no sound is heard from them, yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens God has pitched a tent for the sun, it is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other, nothing is deprived of its warmth. So this was one of the patch passages we had to read in the morning, and I was super, super confused. I had like no clue what it was saying. I read it a few times, we read it at lunch a few times. So during lunch, we actually sat down and discussed what it meant. Alyssa is a genius <laughs> and was willing to explain it to me. Uh, the way she explained it was, uh, as when a bush is doing its bushy thing, it praises God. And when we are true to who God created us to be, it praises him. So be the most Lauren-y Lauren you can be. I'm <laughs> 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 pretty right. <laughs> uh, that was exactly what I did not want to hear, but exactly what I needed to hear. It was not what I thought I was going to learn or where I thought I would grow during the trip. But it reminded me to never try to figure out what God has planned. Just be the me God created me to be and leave the rest in God's hand, more than capable hands. 
So basically, we went to, actually we're technically in Chicago, we were in Cicero, which is a neighborhood just outside of Chicago. Um, yes, a suburb, but it's still pretty much constant to take the train into Chicago anyway. But we basically worked with an after school uh, youth program, and so um, I'll let them share what they've learned. What I learned this past week uh, was that every kid desires to be pursued, um, regardless of their background. Um, playing dodgeball, there were a lot of, yes, I know, dodgeball, the method of learning God. Um, but um, the, li the littlest kids will just like come at you with like all their fierce power and just whip dodgeballs at you, and then proceed to like stare you down and then run away until you start nailing them with dodgeballs. Um, and I think sometimes, um, you know, we are, we should have that desire to be pursued by God that much. I think like we do deep down have a desire to be pursued. We just don't always realize um, that God can be the most fulfillment through that. So yeah, that's what I learned this past week. So what I learned, I guess, um, I, it's kind of like embarrassing to say, I guess, but I was prejudiced in a way towards the people that live there. Um, it's a fully Hispanic neighborhood, so I was just expecting it to be like super dangerous and people are angry and just, I don't know, you can't walk in the streets for some reason. But it was like fine, and I got there and I was like really surprised, and I was like, why was I even thinking these people were like any worse than anyone else? And it was just really cool to see, like we handed out flyers one day. Um, outside of elementary school and it was really cool to see just like people living life and we're just excited to like hear about us or hear about ICI and I don't know it was just really eye-opening to see like people are people and all these people just need love and God's love and it was just really cool to see that and kind of change my view and something I didn't realize I was prejudiced about. I'm gonna hold it right here. All right so Nathan apparently isn't gonna I got to take. <laughs> um so yeah I think one of the biggest things that I learned too is that I did have like a major um, prejudice and I also just um, like for the after school club when we were like playing with the children and stuff like even though we didn't speak the same language as them like a lot of them were bilingual so most of them could speak English but some of them only spoke Spanish and so um, like a lot of times I was upstairs in the gym and so like there was dodgeballs and there was little scooters and there was footballs and there was soccer balls and like it was just like scattered all over the floor and so they were just like throwing things and like running around and screaming and I was like this is so overwhelming like how am I supposed to know these children but like they would come up to you and like nail these like six dodgeballs they just like chuck them at you and they laugh and they like run away and they like look at you and then so you just like start throwing dodgeballs at them and like that's how you bonded with them and it was just like really cool that that's a way that God can use for you to like like love on these children and to like get to know them and build relationships because like the kids that like um that I was upstairs with and that like we played with together like those are the children um that I felt like I had the most impact with and that they had the most impact on me which was really interesting that like God can use like the silliest things and like the coolest things and like he loves fun like he created fun and he wants us to have fun and be filled with joy um and so I just really enjoyed that and I just had like a really good time with um the after school program and I also just really enjoyed like um they had a little what's the outside courtyard garden thing and so we got to like pull weeds and that was one of my highlights of the week I just like love working outside I don't know why so yeah like that was just like a lot of fun so but uh my highlights of the week is actually I got two things I really liked hanging out with the senior high uh, students that came there there was a significantly less of them and they didn't have to split them up into two different groups but the second part that I really liked was setting up the mini golf course that we uh they had a carnival at the end of the week and we spent so much time just making this mini golf course for them to go through and I was the monitor for it when they were doing the carnival. And just all the kids wanting to play mini golf just because I was standing there, like I had two golf balls and three clubs to do and I just felt so bad having to turn some of them away going like we already got people on the court, uh, course playing it. But just the joy they had playing it and like me helping them out because I'm pretty sure a lot of them did not know how to play or use a left-handed club. <laughs> <laughs> but those were my highlights for the week. So on the top of what everyone else said that they learned, I think one of the main things is that God can use us in like the simplest ways. Because um, throughout the week, 
I don't know, for me, like, I felt like we weren't really doing much. Like, we pulled weeds or we washed windows or we made this stubborn, like, <laughs> <laughs> don't even want to bring it up. We made this, like, stubborn soccer, like, arena thing outside that did not want to cooperate with us at all. But, like, through all those, like, little things we were doing, they were so appreciative of, like, everything we did. They kept saying that. So on this trip, I had a lot of spiritual highs. However, this was not like the point where I felt like I learned the most. I felt like I learned the most during my spiritual low. So that's what I'm gonna talk about. Um, going on this trip, I was ready to share the gospel. And um, like that was my focus and that was what was on my mind. But on Wednesday, we had a gentleman get in the van and sit next to me and he was ready to he came in with the mindset of questioning us on why the Bible is valid, so apologetics. And that is not where my mind was, and that was not what I was prepared for. And um, when he got out, I was just, I was so emotionally down and like, just like spiritually broken. And it got to the point where I just wanted to get out of the van. I'm like, Brian, pull over, I need to get out. But it physically wasn't possible, but also spiritually, that probably wasn't the right thing to do. Um, because that was Satan like getting in my brain and making me feel inferior and trying to make me feel like I wasn't good enough to share the gospel. And instead I stayed in the van and let God like work through me. And five minutes later, when we went to the next stop to pick up the next group, like I was in the conversation and like it all went well. So. Some of the things that I learned, um, uh, first of all, apologetics, important. We need to get on that. <laughs> Second of all, um, just learn about it. Learn about it. <laughs> and then, second of all, um, that like if you have God, you can get through so many different things that you don't think that you'd be able to. And then, what was my third? <laughs> um, just like. You can come back. <laughs> okay, so just to give you an overview first, like in case you don't know what we were actually doing down there, um, our main purposes were giving free van rides um, in the evenings to intoxicated people, <laughs> and um, in the morning also offering free pancakes to those who didn't have any more money because they spent it all on beer, and, you know. So college students just like ministering to them. And so um, when she was talking about the van rides, that's like what we were doing in the evening. So um, in the morning, um, we did the pancakes. It was from 10 to one. And I wanna share, you one, share one story with you that like literally was like the biggest miracle of my life. Like I have a miracle journal and write down stories, but this one, like you cannot say that this was not God. It was that awesome. So. Um, at Pancakes one morning, um, I was just wandering and looking. We have these green bracelets, so we know like um, if one of the beach reachers, one of us or the 500 others, are talking to um, a table of people, and so if they are, you know, interrupt them. So I was just kind of wandering, looking, seeing if um, somebody was available, and I finally um, found somebody like 20 minutes to the end of the whole shift that we were on, and it turned out to be like an amazing conversation, and. Um, if you want more details, I'll tell you later, but like great conversation. And the big thing was like the guy at the end was a Muslim and um, we had talked for 40 minutes by this point. And like every time I looked at him, I just saw like the hunger in his eyes of what I was saying. And like, he just was like, he'd nod and smile and like was so into everything I was talking about. And I just asked God like afterwards and like, God, I want to see lost people in that way. I want to be able to look at people and see, like, um, just the hunger that I saw in his eyes. And I just was so sad that I didn't get a picture of them. And so I just kept asking God for the next two days. Every time I was in worship and prayer, like, please don't take his face out of my mind because I want to remember those eyes. So then two nights later, we're doing van ministry. And um, this was the only time that I was in the van that we went to pick somebody up and there was a no-show. 
and then we went to the next one, and it was a no-show. And then we went to the next one, and Judd opened the door, and lo and behold, it was my group of people. Like, keep in mind, there are 500 of us. There's 60 vans in this city, like going all over the city, picking people up, thousands of people, and it's my people. And I'm like, oh, get in here, we gotta talk. And so I was like sharing with them like how I didn't want to forget his face because like, I just know God put it there for a reason. And so I, I was able to um, get their contact information and now I have his face forever. So it's pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so um, this week for me, um, I kind of was struggling and I kind of was like wondering why God had me on this trip. Like I knew that he had like handpicked each of us to be on this trip and like, yeah. So um, part of the reason why I was struggling is because I was put in a role where I wasn't in conversations all the time. Um, I was the navigator for our van for um, the shift that we were in the van. Um, and so I wasn't able to hear a lot of the conversations. I wasn't able to like be a part of them. So like, I was like, uh, I was struggling and I was like, kind of, yeah, like wondering why God had me on this trip. But like through the week he had been um, speaking through people and like um, also during like worship time, like that he was making it clear to me that like my role was just as important as those people in their conversations in the back of the van. Um, and then this past Sunday, we went, we went to um, 242 Church, and um, the pastor there, he he had like the perfect message like coming off of that week. And um, one of the things that he said was, um, since you've been became a Christian, have you become more compassionate or more critical towards um, other people? And um, that kind of strikes my memory of like. Um, our very first night there, we went on a prayer walk, and I remember praying um, that God would just give us his eyes and that we would just remove the judgment from our hearts towards these people because, like, that's an environment where you are, like, you're different from these people, and, and they're pursuing different things than you, and um, I just remember praying that, and my, my heart naturally goes towards judgment, and in that place, looking back now, like, I remember not feeling any, any thoughts or any, like, yeah, any thoughts of judgment, and, like, I just feel like God has, like, grown my heart in that way just through this one week. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Jesse. I'm very new to the church, so that would explain why none of you know me, <laughs> except for these people. These are like my family. But you guys are my family, too, so that's cool. Um, I came to his house a month ago, or less than, or a little over a month. That, the first time I came was actually the first, like, I decided to go on the trip right then. Um, two days later after that, I came to Christ. Pretty awesome. Um, just goes to show that God really does make a um, So, first of all, let me start with this. Uh, this question might, um, might make you feel uncomfortable, um, but it also... Like, don't get dis discouraged from it. It's just to get in your minds. Um, who in here says, like, they're a good Christian? Raise your hand. Who in here thinks they're a good Christian? It's not a trick question. I'm just <laughs> um, All right. So I was hoping a lot of you would raise your hand. I mean, I'm guessing you guys are good Christians. But who says, um, like, who in here has talked to somebody other than like themselves, like pray, uh, like other than themselves, prayed with other people or talked with other people this week. Awesome, awesome, that's pretty sweet actually. Um, so I'm gonna like go off path from that right now, um, but just keep that, those questions in mind. Um, so I got baptized the second day around the trip. You can applause for that. Although that's like such a sweet experience and like it's totally amazing. Um, I felt like there was like something missing uh, throughout the trip, something that was like, like I was asking myself every night, like what am I missing? Like what is the emptiness that I'm feeling? Like after talking to all these people, even though I'm like 
planting a seed in these people, like, what is it that really is, like, what is it you want me to do? What, like, what, how can I get that empathy piece filled? Um, so, going out on the streets, it's really easy to get discouraged. I mean, these people have, like, they're party animals, like, it's hard to, like, get their minds on Jesus when they're like, no, I don't want to change my life. Like, this is awesome. Like, you can't walk up to them and be like, hey, let's talk about Jesus, because they'll be like, oh, no, don't talk to me. Um, but, <laughs> so it was hard to really, like, it's hard to have the courage to go out and do that. Um, so you really, I mean, it's hard to, like, realize you should really trust trust God. And uh, it's really him. Um, you, you have to, like, trust that he will provide wind for your to like catch your sails on your ship and set you going on, on like conversations with people and stuff. So, um, I guess I could say this is on my notes, but I totally went off topic. You know, never mind, forget it. Um, <laughs> so the courage part, um, you just have to go out and trust God, and that no matter what, no matter who you talk to, that the Holy Spirit will guide you through a conversation. And uh, if He really wants you to talk to somebody about the gospel, it'll come up in conversation. Um, and at the end of the conversation, when you leave it, if you didn't talk about or that much about the gospel as you would wish, like you're still planting a seed in somebody's life. Um, and maybe in the future, they'll grow into something. Um, but with, with that, um, I'm gonna go back to that question I asked. Um, and it's kind of an answer to it, you could say, but to be a Christian, is to be a disciple and to be a fo to to follow Christ. I mean, if you want to follow Christ, you have to go out and share with people. You can't just sit in your room and pray by yourself. Um, like every night, like I hope people like I hope I hope this person comes to God. Like I hope so. You can't just you can't just say like Oh God, talk to this person. He bring, makes you a follower because he wants you to go out and share his greatness, and that, like, you can't make a difference in somebody's life without going out and talking to them about it. You can't just expect Christ to talk to them, because that's not going to happen. You have to plant a seed in them so that they will think about that and say, like, like they may not, may not like it at that time, like, maybe they're not prepared for it, but, I mean, once you plant a seed, it's like, it's crazy what, what can happen. Um, I know I've been talking. My first experience of pancakes um, was pretty cool. Um, I was sitting with Brian and a couple other guys, and, they, and I was like, man, like, there's so many people in here, like, and every table has a beach reacher at it. Like, how am I going to be able to talk to somebody? And these two guys walked past me, and they're wearing, like, these necklaces that are, like, drinking necklaces, like, put your party load, drinking <laughs> but, but, um, but I was like, I was like, man, I should go talk to them. And for a minute, I was discouraged. I was like, I don't know my, much. Like, I'm so new to all this. Like, like I, I won't be able to answer any questions he has or anything like that. And Brian, being the guy he was all trip, was like, no, man, you got this. Like, doesn't matter. You just go talk to them. Just, just have a conversation. It doesn't matter if it gets to the gospel or not. Well, I went with that. I got up. I went and sat down with them. Another guy sat down right next to me um, that was part of Beach Reach at the same time, which was great because I got to talk to one person. He talked to the other person, so I didn't have to talk to both of them. But <laughs> that sounds bad. But no, really. It was great. But, like, literally five minutes into the conversation, we started talking about the gospel. And this guy, who I had never met before, just, like, totally opened up and I shared my testimony with him and he was like wow like it's so difficult to relate to people um, like people are so scared to like tell, tell them about their lives and relate because they're afraid they won't relate to somebody um, but got on the gospel talked about it for literally like an hour to two hours and ended up praying over him at the end and that night we were out on the streets and I get a text and it's the guy that I was talking to at Pancakes He's like, hey, man, I'm not really doing anything tonight. Like, what are you doing? Can we hang out? And I was like, well, I'm on the streets right now, but, like, at, like, 1130, we're going to prayer group, and we're just going to, like, pray for two hours. And he's like, oh, can I come? And I'm like, 
<laughs> Even I wouldn't do that. But like, <laughs> go for it, man. Like, let's do it. Like, I'm afraid myself. This is my first time doing the pray prayer thing for like two hours straight. But, like, go for it, though. And him and his friends showed up, and I was like, you don't have to stay the entire time. Like, if you feel like a little awkward, feel free to leave. I'm not gonna say anything. Like, I'll probably text you later and yell at you. No, I'm just kidding. So, they stayed the entire time, and afterwards, they're like, you know, like. I know in our lives we're not like prepared, like we're not ready to get to Christ yet, but like really, like just praying, like it's so informative and it really made a difference. And I think there's a future of like knowing more about Jesus and stuff and being a follower. So that just goes to show you that like no matter who you talk to and no matter what their life situation is in, like God will make a difference. Like there's something that'll happen in their lives. So amen. Yeah.